Um, my background is in product go-to-market strategy and marketing, and I've been in and around the storage business for a long time, but decades, meaning a long time. So, yeah. Um, and if anybody wants to reach out to me, please feel free to. There is my telegram, and I'm happy to engage and talk about what we do, see what you do, see if there's opportunity for collaboration. Uh, so D-Store Network, I think we hit on this earlier today, but just to remind you, the D-Store Network is a marketplace where we are connecting data owners with storage providers and the whole purpose is to bring paid storage deals to Filecoin Network. Um, we have, Jen reviewed this morning, the flywheel that we engage to bring in demand to the supply side of storage providers, service providers, software providers, and such. So one of the things that we are super, super excited about is we are announcing or introducing Data Drop, and Angela's going to give us a little bit more about that, but part of the reasons that I personally feel so excited about this is that this is a truly enterprise-ready service. It has advanced security capability, and I, I truly mean advanced, and, and Angelo will talk about that in just a minute. Um, it has GDPR founding principles built into it, and uh, that is, it's, that's one of those things that, you know, making something retroactively GDPR uh, compliant is difficult, and so doing that right from the ground up is a great way to, to do it. And one of the other things that almost never is used in the same sentence as Filecoin is hot performant storage. So not only are we talking about archive and backup type storage, which is what we typically talk about with Filecoin, this also is going to provide hot performance storage. Uh, it is a sync and share service, and we've gotten really good reviews. Um, we were just the other day on the phone with uh, an attorney at a law firm, and he was looking at it and gave us really good feedback, and seems like that is one of the areas where we may really be able to get in and get some um, progress going uh, with law firms because of the GDPR and um, the protection, the immutability, the verification. You add all those together and it starts to become really appealing to the legal firm. So um, with that, I will... Introduce Angelo. Next slide. There we go. All right, over to you. Do you want this? Yes, please. All right. Hello, everyone. Angelo Shelley. Um, work at Protocol Labs as one of the lead solution architects, and uh, gonna talk about you know data drop a little bit, but first. To give you some background, I'm a storage provider myself, been around since before Mainnet, so been involved with Filecoin for a very long time right now. Um, and I founded Decentrally um, recently, which is uh, the data drop product I'm gonna talk about. Um, been in the data center space for like 20 years right now. So I've been building data center network infrastructure and data storage infrastructure for a very long time. And kind of it's a culmination of all that experience that kind of goes into the data drop product. So I'll go into that right now with you. So data drop, um, quick overview, built from the ground up to make sure that the back end is fully decentralized. Um, as everybody's here aware how Filecoin works, I don't need to get into that specifically. Optimize for cost, because that's definitely something that people look at today, making sure that that's there. And then obviously um, making it very resilient and dependable. So like talking to um, enterprises and making sure that all the qualifications that they need from a product is there 
like enough redundancy, resiliency, making sure that there is like, you know, check markers and check boxes and especially the traceability and like everything in that product. Like I'll, I'll go into like a little demo to you. So if the demo works, then uh, we'll make that shine. Um, so what it is, um, quick, you know, very easy, intuitive drag and drop experience. You'll see that you'll be able to uh, move data between your notebook or between any cloud really easily. Um, you'll see like I'll, I'll demo that as well. Um, per um, file or integration or any data that you move around between those clouds, if it goes into the Filecoin like storage space, um, when it's like completely sealed on Filecoin, you'll see that the proofs that are generated are automatically attached to the files as metadata. So you can look at that directly and go on one of the explorers, kind of verify what the status is of the data being stored and on which storage provider that is happening. Um, and then um, I'll also dive a little bit on how we um, make sure that all that data is, like they say, enterprise ready, like how the security is, the encryption, how the sharding happens, and then how that data gets distributed over the storage providers. So let's get into that a little bit. Um, this is the interface, but when I do the demo itself, um, you'll see that like how it how it moves around. But basically what you're used to from any um, drag and drop or sync and share product is you can or drag and drop it directly in the interface or look or browse through your you know computer and, and upload it pretty easily. Um, for the metadata itself, kind of showing here like the signed hash that will generate that comes from Filecoin that will be attached as metadata to like the files itself to give you that visibility on. Um, what's happening with your data. And then on um, moving around data itself in the interface, I'll show you that um, between some mapped clouds like Google, AWS, and Azure, and Filecoin, you'll be, I'll move some data around live for you to see how that, how that works. Um, why? I think this is very important to me personally, is like why did like I built this product? because it has a focus on enterprise. Like enterprise is like really trying to um, also adopt decentralized storage and in a way like what enterprises usually are after is like having that trust in a product. So you really need to like be very specific and clear on how you build it and show that you also build it that way. Um, and then also like kind of have an easy way of getting into like decentralized storage and, and Falcon in this case. And then uh, of course, like making the, the storage available on a hot layer as a hot tier. Um, and then I'll dive into a little bit on compliance. Um, you have SOC, GDPR, HIPAA that will support this because there is full traceability on what happens with the files throughout uh, the process. Um, this is uh, on the security layer on what happens with the actual data. Um, you can see that the flow itself is, is mapped out here, like how it, like the data gets uploaded, how the kind of the encryption while you're uploading the data through the platform, like there is in transit encryption. So the data itself will be encrypted when it lands the plat on the platform. Then that data will be chunked into little pieces. Those pieces get encrypted, and then those pieces get stored on the storage provider to make sure that you cannot rebuild that entire data set without having all these pieces together. Yes, Mara? I have a question. Oh, yeah, go ahead. So as you built this, Angelo, or after you've built it, have you had any security people look at this and, and evaluate I mean, what you're doing here is really different from anything that I've seen out there. So can you, can you talk about, like, has anybody taken a look at this and what they thought? Yeah, well, it was kind of a private conversation, Mara, but I'll oh, talk to it. Uh, <laughs> so um, I come from a security background myself, um, building a lot of network infrastructure and storage networks for instance, for like some um, financial and, and bank institutions in the Netherlands and in Belgium. Um, obviously, I made some friends there and I have like some of my friends that I know there assess the security level that's been integrated in here to make sure that I'm not just the only one kind of saying that this works pretty good. We're also going to like um, come out with a with like a more documented white paper to justify that this is like secure as, as it's going to get. Because like, like as, as everybody knows, Filecoin is an open network. 
So everything you store on there, you want to make sure that the way you store it is also the way people would see it because it's open. Okay, uh, demo time, I guess. <laughs> that worked right away. So here you see the interface, just kind of a very easy way to move data in. Um, if you're here, kind of in the interface itself, kind of gives you the option to upload files. You can drag and drop or just browse any file that you want to you know, put up there. I'm just going to select something. Just start uploading. We'll give you an overview. Wait, did it upload that quickly? Yeah, it's on there. It's on there already. So you'll see that also this has no signed hash right now, like I said on the metadata, because we just uploaded it. But if you look at one of the other files, you'll see that there is metadata associated to it. If you want to look at it, you see that it kind of pulls up the, the info from the blockchain here. It kind of shows you that, you know, verification was successful. Last time it happened for this file was yesterday, so it does it every 24 hours, so we'll check that again today. Um, if you want to, like, verify that on Philfox, for instance, you can go through here and go there, um, see what storage provider is associated to it. Um, also on, you know, if you go into like the interface itself between the clouds that I was talking about, for instance here, this is an actual Google Drive and an Azure Drive mapped um, overview. So if you take a 100 megabyte file and you want to move from Google directly into Filecoin, you just drag it there, a process will kick off. Because it's like a multiple 10 gig internet in this interface, uh, it's very fast, so it's really you know constrained on the bandwidth, so it really does it really fast. If you look at like where the file is right now, you'll see that the file that I just moved, the 100 megabyte file, also no signed has associated with it just yet, but it's already moved and being moved into pre-processing and you just as easily can move it back to Google. Or even if you want to move it between an Azure bucket and Google, you can just move that as well, but of course the focus is here on Filecoin itself. What I was talking about, like on compliance GDPR of SOC uh, supporting system, is that all the folder activity and the file activity can be traced here. The lock will keep and is associated to your account personally, so nobody else can access it. And the same will go, for instance, if you um, deep dive into a file, you can also find like the metadata that was associated to it when you know it's uploaded, the internal hash, the storage e-tag uh, that's associated in the back end, and then you can see like the folder activity and file activity for that file specifically, what's happening there. Gives you kind of an overview of anything that's happening in and outside of Filecoin as well. Um, and I think that is the demo so far. So the, the file activity, that shows you if anybody's touched that file or done anything with it, it gives you the entire history of that file. There is, um, there is even another feature that you want to like maybe activate is that we added this because people were etching for it, is that the watching feature is you can do, you can activate like watching on files and then any, like if you're sharing any files or associated with somebody else who's interacting with it, you will get a notification when somebody touches it or modifies it. It's all about traceability and knowing what's happening with your data. Um, it's a good thing you mentioned that, Mara, because if you pull up a file and your friends just want to share it, we have the option on sharing it externally. Um, I did not activate that feature for the demo. That's a shame, but. But so, so when, you, when you share a file with someone, you have the ability to set limits for them um, around time or number of accesses or things like that. Is, that. is that correct? Absolutely. So when you're sharing a file, you can share it externally as a public link or as a QR code. You can set the amount of times you can download it. You can set the amount of kind of the duration that it will be available and you can set a password to it, like these common things and they're all associated with all the file activity and that's also all stored on Filecoin to make sure that you never lose it. So all the metadata and the actual data itself would go to Filecoin to make sure that you don't lose it. Is anybody get starting to see why maybe legal firms would be very interested in this? You can lock down files you can share them with other attorneys or other folks that you might need to share them with, and you can put a password on it, 
and you can limit the time and the number of access points that they can get to that file. This is, uh, it, it's really, I mean, it's remarkable in, in my opinion, but. I think we're going back to the demo right uh, to the slides. Right? Okay, so we're going to head back to the slides. Go. Yes. How are you handling encryption? Hang on. Sorry. Uh, two questions. How are you handling encryption? Hang on. Yes, come up here, Paul. Hey, Paul. Hi. So encryption, um, so there is in-transit encryption, so when you're moving data to the platform, because of the SSL encryption, um, moving it there is in-transit encryption, but also when it kind of lands on kind of the memory before it gets into a file coin, even that like system is encrypted, so even the sysadmin that was managing the platform cannot access the data of the user associated to that data. Um, and then when, um, when that data gets processed, we chop it up into multiple bits um, and every bit gets encrypted separately with SHA-256 encryption and that data then goes on to Filecoin. And the keys are held within the platform and I can retrieve my keys? You can bring your own key, but uh, for, uh, for easeability, I provide the key, but if you want to bring your own key, you can. Yeah. And then if I want to delete a file, like when you dragged a file from Google Drive to Filecoin and then that deal is made, how are deletions handled within inside the platform? Thanks for putting me on the spot. Yeah. Um, so deletion is a very important subject in, in Filecoin because of deal duration and everything. Um, handling on the uh, platform itself is, you have two features. You can delete data, which just gives you a delete option. But because of the compliance reason, there is also a marker that you can set saying delete permanently. And what that does is it will destroy all the versions in the backend on the metadata, on the sharding database, and on the encryption keys. So it completely obfuscates any possibility on you know doing anything with the data, even if it's on Filecoin, if you would retrieve bits of it. First of all, you need to know where to retrieve it because you don't know which storage providers there are from like an attacker's perspective. And second of all, even if you have the bits, you then need the encryption key per file and you need kind of the sharding database plus the pre-processing database to rebuild that so that's nearly impossible. It sounds to me what you're saying, Angelo, is that even if you had a quantum computer that could go in and unencrypt one, two, I mean, I don't know how many sharded pieces are there, thousands? Yeah. So let's say you could use a quantum computer to unencrypt thousands of shards. They still have to be put, to, put back together in order, in order for the data to mean anything, right? Yeah, so that's the two layer part is that every shard is encrypted separately so even if you would decrypt all that and build that back together and have the database the associated um, workspace that the data comprises in is also encrypted so that's almost you know you, you're not decrypting that not not even any close um, since the three of us are here and it looks like an infomercial how much does it cost and what is the discount today <laughs> For you, Paul, the family discount, obviously. <laughs> um, yeah, so what it costs today, um, I think we're coming out with that soon. Um, I can tell you it's competitive to any cloud provider today or any Web3 project out there. It's also like um, cost efficiency and user experience was something that I, I hold dear to myself as well. So I um, want to make sure that um, we, we have a focus on that, so definitely there. And, uh, Mara wants to. Yeah, so um, I'll wrap it up here. Uh, the bottom line is, so we went through this. Um, I hope that you all feel as enthusiastic about this as I do, because I think that this is literally changing the game within Filecoin. This is going to make a difference. And uh, what we are looking for is storage providers. Angelo works with storage providers on the back end, and you will get paid. 
you will get paid in fiat cash to work with us on the back end in being a Filecoin storage provider ah, behind uh, this service. We are also going to offer a limited access or private beta period. If you are a data owner and you are interested in trying out this service, please get in touch with us. We want this to be like the best customer experience. The best way to do that is to test it. By the way, this service has been up and live for a few years. This is not brand new. This is not new code. Angelo's been working on this and developing this for years. And now we are going to really open it up to the Filecoin community, and we want to do some rigorous t testing. That's why we're going to do this beta. Um, so please contact us and can come join us. We are super interested in having you as a storage provider and or a beta tester of this. We're really, really excited, and we can't wait to hear from you. Thank you.